Hi, welcome to WMD, that's Woody's Modelling Diary, with another episode of What's On My Bench. Well, we start similar to my last episode with two locos on the bench. Um, today is slightly different. Following my amazingly successful installation of a DCC chip into this Hornby Britannia, I'll be seeing if I can do the same to that Class 86. That's going to be interesting. Stay tuned. Well, having cleared the bench of the Britannia class loco, we can now see a little bit closer um, this 86. It's a Hornby model, um, paid £31.50 at Spalding Model Railway Exhibition for this, um, which is actually less than the cost of most modern wagons, new wagons these days. So uh, it's a bit of a bargain. It does run on DC and uh, it was checked out. So we know it's a good one. I've seen it running, so I do know that. Um, it may be a little bit more complex than the Britannia class to wire up. Um, although it's got a, a ring field motor the same as the Britannia, I have a feeling this one's wired up slightly different. I've loosened the body off, so let's just lift it off and see what we've got. Yeah. Some interesting points there. Uh, pantographs obviously wired up because at one time Hornby did do catenary which you could actually run your loco on their big thing was you could run both one of these and a conventional loco on the same uh, track because obviously one pulled its power from the track whilst this pulled its power from the catenary and they both shared a common return um, the wiring here is going to be a little bit interesting uh, we've got several wires going into what looks like a capacitor on a bridge across there um, so that's going to be interesting I think the first thing I've got to do is is get rid of all this gubbins here uh, release the wires and then see whether these two um, brush covers are going to cause a problem or not depending on whether they um, live to the chassis or not that could uh, mean that we need to insulate one of the screws so I'll do that and we'll come back in a moment well I've desoldered those um, a fair few wires here luckily the two to the pantograph are just uh, sort of crimped clips here so they were quite easy to pull off that lot just came off uh, with some soldering or desoldering as it were so we're left uh, with the motor uh, unwired, so let's just, so 9 volt battery it does prove that those two terminals are the right terminals. Um, the question is whether any power is getting through to either of those screws, because if it is then we've got to isolate the screws. So I'm going to use this test meter and I've set it just to continuity. If I switch it on, you should hear that. And basically what I'm going to do is just test whether there is any power getting through to those two terminals from the wheels. Uh, because if it is, then we do need to isolate it, otherwise we could blow up the motor or the chip. Can't see anything, so have a look at the other one. And just so that we know that it's working, if we we connect up to either of those, then we know that there is power going through the wires, through the pickups, to those terminals there. <coughs> so that's good news. That's going to make this fairly simple, which is nice. So next job I've got to do really is uh, decide where I'm going to put a decoder and how the wiring is going to go. So um, in a moment I'll get this back up on its wheels and we'll have a look at the decoder. Now this was the lace uh, decoder that I put in the Britannia. It was, it's quite small. Um, and that was useful because there wasn't a lot of space in there. For this uh, particular installation, I'm going to use this um, 
8 pin decoder from DMG Electech. Never used one before. Um, it is a bit physically bigger. Um, and that's the reason why I'm putting it in here because there's plenty of space for it and I'd rather save what uh, decoders I've got of these to fit into small spaces. Um, so that's me trying to think ahead. So that's going to fit in there. Uh, I've fitted it again to an 8-pin harness, which uh, I bought. Uh, they're about 150. And uh, just as I did with Britannia, it gives me the ability to change out a decoder should this one become faulty or I decide I want to run it on analog. I can just put a, an 8-pin blanking plug in or if I want to sell it. Uh, and keep the decoder, I can sell it, um, having said that it is DCC ready by putting the blanking plug in. So it does offer you that flexibility. Again with the Britannia, there's a lot of wire here, so um, some of that's going to be trimmed off. I don't like to trim wires off uh, decoders, um, a because it's very small uh, soldering points on these uh, sort of pads here, and uh, secondly, I don't really trust myself with uh, a soldering iron and the heat going back up into the decoder and perhaps cooking some of the components. So that's why I tend to use this end to uh, do, the, do the soldering. It, it means it's isolated from there. So I think the next thing is to clean up some of these wires, get the ones I need ready for uh, connection to the harness and then we can solder up so see you in a moment right having had a little bit of a look around and trying to figure out the best way that i can work this i've decided to put the chip in there it's uh, next to the ballast weight there is sufficient room using the two sort of cab moldings you can tell there's sufficient room to get that in there without it interfering with the roof um, the socket plug will sit down in the gap there. The wires will come back here. I need to extend this red wire and uh, the black wire, which is somewhere there it is. And also connect in this wire for the catenary. And then connect it into the loom and connect the loom up to these two terminals for the motor. And at that point, um, it should hopefully be ready for programming. So my next step is going to be doing this soldering so we'll come back in a few moments uh, once that's done. See you soon. So I've been busy with the, uh, the soldering iron. Basically um, we've got the chip there which was mounted against the ballast weight. Um, I've extended the red wires connected that to that and then into the uh, harness for the socket. Same with the black, I've also connected in the catenary or the pantograph uh, wire as well. So if anybody ever wanted to run uh, on pantograph, they should be able to. Not quite sure how that works on DC, but um, that's perhaps something I need to have a little bit of a look at. Um, the orange and grey wires have gone to the pickups um, and we've tried to tidy the wiring up. It's obviously a lot more space than in the Britannia uh, tender drive, so it's been a little bit easier. It does look a little bit neater. So anyway, um, with all, it, all that wired in, the next thing is to see whether it actually works by putting it on the service track. So we'll do that. Well, we've got the service track out and... Uh, locos on there. Um, what I have done as well because I've not used one of these uh, chips before is just get the technical sheet which DMG Electech supplied with it and I do know <coughs> which is interesting is that the primary address is 3 which you would expect but the range is 1 to 127 uh, which means it's not actually 4 uh, digit capable so I've got to choose the number between 1 and 127, which in this case is going to be 86. Not my normal pattern because I usually use the uh, first four numbers of a loco, but 86 will do me. 
So let's just enter that into uh, the controller and let's see what happens. Well, we've got movement, that's good. So hopefully uh, that's now programmed. Now the other interesting thing about uh, the sheet is that it does tell me um, that it should be DC capable as well. So what we can do just to test that is put a 9 volt battery across it and just see what happens. Yep. So it is DC compatible as well. So next thing is let's get it on the track and see what it does. The loco is on the layout. Um, I've put its pantograph up so it can draw current from the imaginary continuary system which I've yet to install. You never know, but I might get round to that one day. But we're here to see whether it actually will operate or not. So let's give it a little bit of oomph. That's good. Doesn't like to do speed step one, but it does move on two. Hmm, interesting. So, uh, it's it's proved that it works. Um, I had hoped that that would happen, so I've prepared, just in true Blue Peter style, this rake of four coaches for it to haul. So let's see where we can actually successfully couple up. Alright, it's got power enough to uh, move those. They're not the freest, as you can tell, it's slipping a little bit there. They're not the freest running coaches, they're old Hornby ones. But yeah. It's struggling a little bit on the curves, but apart from that... No, I'm pleased with that. Another woody success, amazingly enough. I'm really pleased with that. Um, just over 50 quid. £31.50 for the loco. At £22 for the decoder and the harness. And uh, I've got quite a nice loco there. Which is great. And uh, following on from the success of Britannia, it's nice to know that for just over £100 I've got two nice locos. Um, neither of them will ever match the present day Hornby or Bachman standards, but to be quite honest, I mean, from this sort of distance, it still looks good to me, and that's the main thing. So, if you've got some old locos, uh, which you're thinking of uh, getting rid of because you've gone to DCC, or you think perhaps uh, some of the modern day mo locos are a lot more detailed, um, I think about putting a DCC chip in if you run DCC and uh, give these locos a bit of a new life anyway as all normal thanks ever so much for watching i really do appreciate uh, people viewing and giving some feedback and uh, subscribing so thank you to everybody you take care of yourselves bye